and I came across some more, and I don't know how I missed this, but there's more artwork of Joseph. There's not just this statue. So I came across this picture of Joseph, and I was like, how on earth did I miss this? What's going on, people? Welcome to the King's Monologue and Josa. Let's talk about Josa. Man, first of all, it is so good to be doing something different than the Almana period and the 18th dynasty. I feel like since I've begun this journey, I've just kind of been stuck on that era. Some of you who are subscribers to the channel or have maybe seen some of my reconstructions might start to think that I'm a little bit obsessed with the Armana period. That is not the case. I'm not obsessed with that period. It just happens to be where I started. And I've actually been really waiting for the opportunity to diversify and start to do reconstructions from some of the other eras. And that brings me on to where I immediately was drawn to straight away. And that is Pharaoh Joseph. One of the reasons I was really looking forward to reconstructing Pharaoh Joseph is because actually he's never been reconstructed before. At least to my knowledge, I can't think of a reconstruction of Pharaoh Joseph that's in general circulation. So this might be the first one and it might be really exciting. You know, it could really take off. There could be lots and lots of interest or, you know, maybe it's just something that I personally will love and doesn't quite fly. But either which way, we ended up on Josa. Now, I have my suspicions as to why Josa has never been chosen or at least not been given focus. And that's because when I got into studies of ancient Egypt and actually learning about the African origins of ancient Egypt, this was one of the first statues that I saw and I was like, wait a minute, that's an African. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. That is a African man. You cannot spin this any other way. Now, I get into the subject of African phenotypic diversity quite a lot and it often needs clarifying. So when I make statements like that as an African, it sounds like maybe I believe Africans have one phenotype and that's not true. Actually, Africans have the full broad spectrum of phenotypes. But because Africans are the oldest race and Africans are the kind of original race on the planet, we exhibit the broader spectrums of phenotypes. So although we have all of the phenotypes that other populations have, they don't all have African phenotypes. There are some phenotypes that are literally exclusive to African people. I'm not going to go on too much more about that, but the point being is when I saw Pharaoh Joseph's statue originally, I was like straight away, that is an African. It's always kind of been a dream of mine to one day revisit that statue, look at that statue and actually create a reconstruction of what it looks like. And I'm so grateful now that I'm in a position where we've got the technology to hand where I can actually create these reconstructions with fairly little material to begin with and kind of just watch these reconstructions emanate in front of me as I pull in these various features. It's a really exciting process. So anyway, without rambling too much, I want to kind of get into how I got to this. So I'm going to show you the first version actually to begin with because I shared this one. So this, or at least I shared half of it. If you're subscribed to me, I shared half of this face as a post, but this is the, this is where I started off originally. Obviously, the most challenging element of reproducing Joseph's likeness was the sabotage of his eyes and his nose, which obviously are a huge point of recognition in people. However, thankfully, Joza has some prominent features that if collated into a reproduction should together present a familiar countenance. The most notable of these features are his cheeks, his brow, his mouth and his signature locks. These were all captured in my initial reconstruction. Okay, I'm gonna have a little bit of a quick caveat here. I think you know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you're subscribed, hit that bell button. Um, please share this out. I am under a bit of a shadow ban from YouTube for some reason, I don't know why, but we are essentially shaking up the wasp nest here. So the more that we can do to share this information and get it out, the better it will be. And back to the video, thanks. Recreating that look and that expression to begin with was fairly, I wouldn't say easy, but you could instantly see the relationship between my reconstruction and this original statue. It wasn't exactly perfect, and the reason being was I wasn't sure about what to do with the nose. Essentially, the nose had been cut off. He doesn't have any eyes either. So in that area, there was so much creative expression, so much freedom that I had to kind of like maybe express or put in what I 
thought would fit. So I kind of just created the nose based on the phenotype of the face. So based on the other features, now there was one rule. So one of the things I didn't want to do is make the base of the nose and the base of the nose, obviously the back of the nostrils, um, you could kind of see where that's been cut off. So the back of the nostrils in many ways is going to dictate the breadth of the nose or the width of the nose. And I didn't want to over or understate that. So that was the one rule when I was putting the nose in place. I did that and I was quite proud of myself, walked away thinking, hey, great reconstruction, good work, King. And then I was flicking through a book of mine called Egypt Revisited and I came across some more, and I don't know how I missed this, but there's more artwork of Josa. There's not just this statue. So I came across this picture of Josa and I was like, how on earth did I miss this? This completely changes my, so obviously my original reconstruction, I kind of have to bring this into new light. I have to definitely cast that nose out of the window because that nose is not this nose. I have to somehow now recreate this nose. And if that wasn't enough, I then did more research and I came across this other stele, which perfectly corroborates with the first one. It's con a conclusive sign of what Pharaoh Joseph's nose looked like. This was a very clear message being sent here. I've actually got uncle with this exact nose, which was weird enough because I, I almost referenced that in my mind. So straight away, I saw these representations of Pharaoh Joseph's nose and I was like, I know what that nose looks like. I've seen that before. And so now the challenge was, okay, I still need to honor the breadth of the nose that I've been given with what's been chopped off at the statues but now I have to shape the nose so from the front it appears to look like the same nose that we have here so without you know keeping the secret for too long this is what I came up with I was really pleased with this and it just looked right. And I want to tell you about a few amazing things that happened when I did this new nose. One of the first things that happened is that the new nose did force me to drop the, the lower point of the nose down more. And I realized I'd missed that detail when looking at the original statue. And what this actually did is it forced his lips to protrude more. It kind of forced that. And what was happening is as I was placing this nose in place, it was making everything looks similar. So now the front aspect of the reconstruction looked more like the statue, but it also looked more like the steady art. You can see the kind of length of this kind of like nose that he has, this kind of rounded nose that he has, really forces his lips to kind of, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, he doesn't have a dissimilar expression in terms of the breadth of his lips and you know the way they protrude to me to be totally honest with you it's quite it's quite uncanny in some ways so sometimes i was actually looking at pictures of myself or just looking at myself on kind of my camera phone to to get inspiration of how to shape this but when i did this new nose all of a sudden now it took on this new vibrancy and this new accuracy so i was really pleased with it so, you know, that I'll be honest with you, this isn't going to be a long video. That's it. This is my reconstruction of Pharaoh Josa. I think it's probably the first meaningful reconstruction of Pharaoh Josa that I've seen. Apologies if you've done one. I'm not saying it's not unmeaningful. I didn't, it just means I haven't seen it. <laughs> but I really, really hope that this image or this presentation of Pharaoh Josa does get taken on and does get shared. Because to be honest with you, like, this honours the stele art, this honours his statue and uh, hopefully this honors the builder or at least the, the pharaoh that was in charge when the step pyramids of kemet were built i hope that this is in honor of him i am so proud of this reconstruction and like i said before it's such a relief and it's so great to be away from the new kingdom doing some old kingdom pharaohs it gives me a new phenotype to play with it gives me that more broader continental african phenotype and kind of feel like the new kingdom is definitely more restricted to the modern day east african whereas the old and middle kingdoms give you a chance to play with a little bit more of the phenotypes that are available around the african continent so that just having that kind of creative freedom is a little bit more fun for me so i'm really 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 pleased with this reconstruction of pharaoh Josa. i would love to get some of your feedback please do like 
share, subscribe. If you are subscribed, hit that bell button so you get the notifications. I mentioned before, I think I'm on a bit of a shadow ban. So, hey, look, any help I can get from you guys in terms of getting this out there is fantastic. Thank you for tuning into the channel.